Hey, dog. What? Uh. Xavier and Company. Oh, hello, Mr. Cat. Your invoice number. Um. Uh. uh. Um. Hello. Oh, hey, dog. What's up? Yeah, I'm just talking to dog online. Can you hold on a second? Dander and Company. Whitehead, I need that report. Uh, yes, sir. I'm just finishing it now. Doggy dog. dog. Hey, dog. What's up? Whitehead, I need that report. Dog, gotta go. Dog, go oh, sorry. Dog, gotta go. Dog, gotta go. Mrs. Cat. Mrs. Cat. Mrs. Cat. Whitehead. The fact is, multitasking is a myth. Our brains can't do it. You simply become less efficient and more distracted. Your error rate goes up 50% and it takes you twice as long to do the same task. Listen to what Tim Jenkins has to say. He's the co-founder of Point B, a leading business consulting firm. Well, I think there's a fallacy out there that the, the folks that can multitask are more effective. There are times when it's just important to focus on one thing. I think we also give, need to give people permission to check out, to check out of the communications network t temporarily to get things done. Because when you're always on, when you're always online, you're always distracted, right? And the brain rule is telling us that that is a very unproductive mode to be in. And so the always online organization is actually the always unproductive organization. Yeah, I don't think I'll be multitasking very much in the future. I know, you know, I would never was much of a multitasker. I really like to do one thing, one thing at a time. But just the fact that there's 50% more error when people are um, multitasking, and it takes twice as long to do a task. So it doesn't really make much sense it that we would even time. bother doing it. No, it doesn't. It's take time. so important, I think, to be at work and to have permission to just unplug from all of that, close that screen down, close your eyes down, give yourself a moment to just really download from that whole network of communication out there. Be present. It's important. It's really important. When I'm writing in the morning when we're working on our book, Mitch, um, we have an upcoming book called Seven Ways to Instantly Relax at Work. When I'm working on that book, Mitch, I have to turn off my cell phone, I turn off the home phone, and I close my email. Yeah. Do one thing at a time and then move on to the next thing. You'll be more efficient. You'll feel better, too. So, brain roll number three that we're going to talk about tonight, I don't think it's number three in the book, but who's counting, is that we are productive at different times of the day. Yeah. All of us have different sleeping and wake cycles. We have different biorhythmic cycles. Some people, I think they call them early chronotypes or something, something like, like that. that yeah. Late chronotypes, <laughs> some, some big word. Basically means early risers, morning people, and night yeah. owls. <laughs> And this video really illustrates, <laughs> I get the morning guy. I'm more I like, am that morning guy. I know, morning guy, I know, I know, I I'm, I'm the person <laughs> who's um, a little bit cranky in the morning. <laughs> are you a so, night person or are you more in between? I'm more of a night person. Yeah, that's I've trained I myself with children to be more of a morning person, but I get juiced up when the sun goes down. A little vampirish, I guess. But yeah, morning time is slow time. We're moving slow. We're not high and happy. Like Bernie is very, very happy in the morning. <laughs> and I've we've worked out after eleven years of like, hey, you know, in the morning, just tone it down a yeah, little bit. Elsewhere, go do that elsewhere. So we've worked it out. But employers need to know about this as well. So enjoy the clip. Another area in the science of sleep involves night owls and morning folks. We all knew this kid, and this kid, and we know them today. Good morning, everybody. Have you smelled the air this morning? It is amazing. It's got that crisp, clear, it's a brand new day smell to it, like absolutely anything is possible. You just want to say, thank you, God, for making such a brand new day. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to climb to the top of a tall mountain. You know what I'm going to do when I get there? I'm going to shout. Do you know what I'm going to shout? I'm going to shout, bring it on. I'm ready.
Estimates vary, but between 10 to 20% of us are morning persons, or what we like to call early chronotypes. And about 10 to 20% of us are night persons, or late chronotypes, and the rest of us are somewhere in the middle. If you fall into the late chronotype category, you were probably labeled lazy or unmotivated as a kid. And the scandal is this, that's unfair. The tendency may actually be embedded in your DNA. Possibly because in our early quest to survive, some of us had to stay awake at night to protect the others. It's probably in our family genes. Though you can take a test for this stuff, we instead label and blame. Out of necessity, we try to trick ourselves. But if we really wanted a productive solution for life and business, we would let morning people work at their optimum time and let night persons work when they are at their best. A novel thought, but maybe people would be happier and more productive. Yeah, I love that part when he talked about how people work at optimal times, they'd be happier and more productive. I've always thought that was a really great idea, and I know there are some businesses out there that have sort of experimented with that. All of this is about people being increased productivity, people feeling more successful. Speaking, Mitch, of optimal times to work, the next brain rule we're going to talk about is that our brains naturally cycle down in the mid-afternoon. The book really does a great job of explaining what they call sleep chemicals and awake chemicals, and that these chemicals are sloshing around, that's the technical term, that they're sloshing around <laughs> in our brains. It's a medical they, term. Yes, and they actually compete for, um, you know, which chemical is going to be more active right now where you're very alert and awake or you're going to sleep. And regardless of what kind of chronotype you are, meaning what time of the day you're most productive, in the early to late afternoon, around 3 o'clock, all of us experience the afternoon sleepies. Boy, for me, Mitch, 2 to 3 o'clock, if I happen to be either in my office or at home and I'm by myself, I feel a nap coming on. Yeah, I know. It's the best time of the Boy. day. In Mexico, they've got it all figured out. That's siesta time after, after people eat and are processing their food, too. But nap time, a little bit of nap time in the afternoon. If, it would be, if people would be more productive, just that 15-minute nap, if people would be more productive, I don't see why employees would have a problem with that. And they are more productive. Watch this video, and you'll hear the statistics on productivity and a little bit of napping. Just so you're clear, everything is riding on this meeting. And I mean everything. We need this sale. Don't blow it. Ah, the Dander 500. The question that must be on all of your minds is... <coughs> the question... That, the question that's probably on all of your minds... On all of your minds... On all of your minds... Is... How can the dandruff <laughs> 500 be good in my life? Uh, or? <laughs> my customers.